So you have an idea. You want to solve a problem. You want to change the world. But where do you start? How do you even begin the journey? And how do you allow the seed of your idea to take root, grow strong, and bear the fruits of the impact that you actually want to make? The quest to answer these questions was one of the first inspirations, the seeds of inspiration for starting the Hungry Lab, where we're building a platform that combines technology with humanity to allow anyone who is hungry to create a brighter future access the opportunity, tools, and resources to do so in a way that allows them to not just to survive, but thrive in a volatile future. So just like in Mother Nature, where seeds take a long time to grow, the seeds of the Hungry Lab were planted many years ago. In 2002, I was lucky enough to be invited as a young, idealistic college student on a road trip to Mount Elgon, which is on the border of Kenya and Uganda, on a scientific expedition with a naturalist, an entomologist, and a soil scientist. And just like in Mother Nature, the lessons that they taught me shaped the early guiding philosophy of the Hungry Lab on how do we actually create a future-proof, resilient future, the way nature does. What I learned was that you have to start with the soil. We tend to overlook it. And the soil scientist taught me that soil is one of the most underrated resources, but one of the most important, because that's where everything takes shape. Without the right soil, we cannot grow the right seed. And how did this shape the philosophy of the Hungry Lab? Everything starts with the soil. So when you're looking to build your idea to survive and thrive in the future, to make an impact, what, is that? what do you need? Soil requires the stakeholders, right? It takes a village. You cannot do this alone. So how do you create a win-win-win ecosystem where everyone has the ability to contribute? How do you allow it to have the oxygen, the breathing room to grow? And how do you acquire the knowledge, the intelligence, to shape your journey? And how do you allow yourself to become a leader and inspire others in your journey? You start with the soil. What does that look like in real life? As an example of what we're doing in India, in Tamil Nadu, we've created a multi-stakeholder task force consisting of NGOs, investors, entrepreneurs, colleges, and scientific institutions to really nurture and prepare the soil for an incubating environment where we can allow rural agricultural entrepreneurs to succeed. Once you have the soil, you need the right seed. And what the entomologist on that mountaintop taught me was that tiny can be mighty. And just regardless of background or where you come from or your age or your circumstances of birth, everyone has the right to grow and nurture their seed of an idea to make an impact. And what we're trying to do is create an inclusive future for everyone. So what does that seed look like? Regardless of social, economic, educational, or digital gaps, we're bridging all of those to create a future for everyone in our platform. What does this look like in real life? In one of our pilot programs in Tamil Nadu, we're focusing on some of the underrepresented youth, the disadvantaged students from poor uh, economies and poor backgrounds in the rural areas where they may not have the same access as the urban youth do, but they still have the hunger to achieve and to change their communities. And so what we're doing is we're bridging the gaps and focusing on nurturing those seeds by covering the critical skills gaps to allow them to embark on their journey. And we're proud to say that 40% of the Hungry Lab's global community of innovators and change makers are women. And we're really proud of that. Now, the naturalist taught me something very important, too, and that was the third lesson, that in order to survive, right, we eat to survive. And that is the Hungry Labs framework, educate, act, transform. Are you hungry? Let's eat, right? But that's not enough for the future. On top of that mountain, we got caught in a storm. And we realized that we needed to prepare for the unpredictable. In a future that's growing volatile, how do you actually 
create an environment that you can be prepared for a lot of the uncertainties. The naturalist taught me you have to look at the bigger picture, and you have to create win-win-win ecosystems, just like in nature, where everybody has a place. We need to forecast, empower, accelerate, sustain, and transcend. That's actually how our methodology has been shaped in our platform to guide and allow the next generation to future-proof themselves, their communities, and their ideas. What does that look like in real life? We have the honor and privilege of working with the father of India's Green Revolution, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, and the M. S. Swaminathan Research Foundation in Chennai <laughs> to future-proof the next generation of agricultural entrepreneurs, allowing them to adapt, understand the market needs for the future, create a pipeline for talent in which we take innovation from lab to market, from field to market. And you can't do that without anticipating tomorrow and preparing today. Different soils grow different seeds. Different seeds grow different fruits. We are creating a world in which everyone has a place at the table, regardless of where you come from. Because we all need different fruits. We all need that diversity. And it takes everyone to build a brighter future because we are all stakeholders of the future. So, Think about what do you want to harvest when you think about the future? How will you prepare your soil? How will you nurture your seed? And how will you cultivate your ecosystem? Ultimately, what are you hungry for? How will we get there? Thank you very much, and stay hungry.